More than 10 years have passed since the beginning of the talk about the colony collapse disorder, but the investigation into the cause of the mysterious disappearance of bees is still ongoing. CCD are on the list of suspects for the role of provocateurs. Microwave radiation of cellular telephony. Pesticides. Agrochemistry. Intensification of keeping bee colonies. Beekeepers' mistakes. General decrease in the immunity of bees. In 2018, reports of mass deaths of bees began to arrive from all Russian regions. In 2019, the situation has not changed and information about the sea of honeybees has become similar to reports from the front. Panic writ the apiary. The ridiculous versions of deliberate poisoning of bees and hidden sabotage are being discussed everywhere. The apiary owners desperate to cope with their troubles. directly turn to the head of state for help. Dear Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, We ask you to help our trouble. We ask you to assist in the search for those responsible for the persecution of fields in 15 districts of the Kursk region and the death of bee colonies so that they pay the damage to the beekeepers. Please help, within the framework of the law, to toughen the rules for the use of pesticides. Colleagues. Local authorities are unable to control the situation, give beekeepers insane recommendations, including to lock up bees during the chemicalization of gardens in fields. Which leads to more serious consequences on farms, and the beekeepers themselves are teetering on the brink of a nervous breakdown. Temperature 25 degrees in the shade. Look. Look, honey is flowing. Look, oh, oh, oh. Some have already died from poison, and these, look. Look what our homeland is doing. That's what it does to us. I gave them water here. In general, I. Look what these officials have done, infections. Officials, you are to blame. What have you done? What have you done? You bastards. The strongest families have died. And how much can you tolerate? Rejoice, regional administration, rejoice. Your job, everything is lost. Killed. These died from the heat. And those died from poison. See what should I do? Look, what have you done? Rejoice, rejoice, rural administration. How many times have I asked you to help? Helped, helped. They are bees. They cannot. They are dying. Practicing beekeepers began to reappear with fairly forgotten grandfather's tools from the depths of centuries. They use magic to remedy the situation. Ten years ago, my apiary turned into a continuous cemetery. I was in despair and did not know what world I was in. Then I collected the dead bees and donated them to the spirits of the earth. Casting spells, I burned their bodies in a ritual fire. Evil forces retreated from my apiary. 
But this year they again became incredibly hungry and like wolves attacked my farm. There are scattering of dead bees in my apiary. Horrible horror, go away, purge the darkness, the disease, away. Lie in the ground ashes. But many no longer do anything and do not wait. They have lost faith in any help, betray their noble cause and leave the beekeeper field en masse. Nevertheless, against the background of such a bleak picture, there seems to be news with a positive sign. While the beekeepers with bated breath await the results of wintering in 2019-2020, it seems that some people managed to find Ariadne's thread and still recognize the fierce enemy of honeybees. Honeybees appeared on planet Earth at the same time that flowering plants showed their beautiful face to the sunlight and since then. Bees and flowers have been living in an inextricable connection with each other. For some time now, humans have joined the union of plants and insects. which has led to a significant increase in the number of honeybees and pollinated flora. Among the bees themselves, man has consistently made two industrial revolutions, which are known under the names beekeeping and apiary based on a collapsible hive. About 200 years have passed since the start of the last revolution, and the air smelled of another. Third revolution, apparently an intellectual one. St. Petersburg, the northern capital of Russia, a city museum and a city of hard fate. Our main character lives in this city, and we go to him. A 21st century apiary is being created here and we were interested to know how it might look. <laughs> In a nutshell, not only bees live and work in an apiary of the 21 century, but there is an intention to add a certain entity to each family that will contribute to the life of bees within the framework of their competence. The entity understands the language of bees and is a translator between the bee family and the beekeeper. The entity has well-developed telecommunications connections, and it will inform the apiary owner about the state of bee colonies and the apiary in general, no matter where he is in the world. So, relatively speaking, each bee colony in an apiary of the 21 century acquires a maid governess who looks after the bee family, knows and records all its needs and, moreover, reports on the state of each family to the apiary owner. Within the framework of the 21 century apiary, private, general and even global bee issues will be resolved. For example, from global issues it is planned to rid bees of their main scourge the varroa mite, reveal the secret of the disease of the collapse of bee colonies. However, despite the fact that the construction of a 21st century apiary is only at the beginning of the journey, the first important results have already been obtained from now on. The secret of the colony collapse disorder is no longer a secret. The author of the project Apiaries of the 21 Century already had guesses about the disintegration of bee colonies and to confirm this assumption he had to set up an experiment and this experiment 
It was necessary to start by 2018 to carry out the experiment at a latitude of 60 degrees north latitude in a wooded area, in the crowns of trees, the so-called first in command was erected, or, if you want another way, a testing ground. The commander hood was populated with a package of healthy, according to documents bees of the buck fast breed. Subsequently, from the side there appeared two more fetal uterus from the Krasna Polyansky nursery of the same breed. The commandery itself is located so that within the radius of flight of bees there are no arable lands, other alien apiaries, only a forest and wild grass meadows. During the entire period of the experiment in the commandery, as a result of controlled swarming and abduction, an additional eight new bee colonies were obtained. Sometime in 2017, it became clear to me that since the appearance of such a phenomenon as the collapse of bee colonies, at least two outbreaks have occurred, in 1997 and, more severe, in 2007-2008. The second outbreak stirred up the world, unleashed the language of the media, and gave a name to a new phenomenon, colony collapse disorder. If we analyze the time when there was a massive loss of bee colonies in the world, we will see that these years are related by the same sign, these are years of low solar activity. The sun as it were, goes into hibernation, spots cease to be born on its surface, and our sun radiates energy half a strength. The solar wind becomes moderate and weakly excites the Earth's magnetosphere. As you know, the Earth's magnetosphere protects the planet from galactic cosmic radiation, deflecting the lion's share of gamma quanta to the magnetic poles. During periods of weak Earth's magnetosphere, the background of cosmic radiation increases and this somehow becomes the cause of viral epidemics among insects. Moreover, in some years of low solar activity, new forms of viruses appear. Those viruses with which some species of animals were sick spread to new species of insects and newcomers also begin to suffer from a microorganism hitherto unknown to them. Analysis of the literature on beekeeping shows that for almost the entire 20th century, viral diseases do not appear in the list of bee diseases at all. Ukraine, the city of Zhitomir, homeland of Soviet cosmonautics. The father of Soviet cosmonautics Sergei Pavlovich Korolev was born here. We visit this city because another amazing person lives in it, a participant in World War II, a frontline soldier, a paratrooper of the 67th Heavy Tank Brigade, a beekeeper with 60 years of experience. And who is better than such a person? You can learn about how things were in the beekeeper field during more than half a century of history. Yes, I, as part of a tank brigade, did not reach Berlin 60 kilometers. On April 18, during the so-called reconnaissance in force, he was seriously wounded. Half of the leg muscles were torn off. On that day, the Vlasovites burned 17 of our as two tanks with Faust cartridges. Before that, in past battles, I caught a bullet in the head and a bullet in the hand, but continued to fight. We already had two paratroopers on the tank, although four of them were needed. In a hospital in Poznan, my leg was almost cut off. In Rembertovo I came to my senses and only after a while returned home to Zhitomir. After the war, life was. What was life like there? Somewhere less than a year or two later, I fell ill with arachno-encephalitis. 
the second time I visited the other world. And so my doctor says to me, if you want to live on, take possession of the bees. Over time, I heard his parting words, the raised bees are never parted with him again. And even if I crawl around the world on all fours, and then I will never abandon my dear insects. When I began to build an apiary, bees appeared, and they grew up like out of water. Neither I nor my fellow companions knew what these bee diseases were. In winter, they did not have time to make a sufficient number of hives, frames and other necessary things. Very soon my apiary began to number over a hundred families, which was too much because then I was still working at the enterprise and practicing nomadic beekeeping. He has made and tested almost all known systems of hives, from the Levitsky hive, Ukrainian Dardan hive to Twin and Daylon. Now, what now? Something in the world has become that bees have no life, they do not live but wither. It is not possible to grow queens, layering. And it is necessary to carry out all this without eyes and dexterity through a diligent struggle. And all the same, by autumn or winter, most of the bee colonies disappear. The fight is not for honey. Not for any profit, but for the survival of the bees at any cost. It was something that happened that had never happened before, and he has no name. Noted enough, right? After all, the first description of pathogenic viruses that cause disease in bees we find in the book of the German author Friedrich Pohl, Diseases of Bees, Diagnostics and Treatment, in 1995. The book was published in Russia in 2004. At the end of the same century, several more new viruses were identified and described, causing paralysis in bees. To date, about 20 RNA-containing pathogenic viruses have been found in the honeybee Apis mellifera. There are also DNA-containing viruses, iridoviruses, which, with active replication in insect cells, lead to developmental pathology, negatively affect the physiological and behavioral characteristics of bees, up to the death of an entire family. But iridoviruses cannot, in terms of the strength of their effect, compare with single-stranded RNA viruses of the Dittistrovirus, Ifliviruses and Nodovirus families. The most dangerous diseases in bees are caused by the following viruses, in the family of Dissistroviruses, Acute Bee Paralysis Virus, ABPV, Israeli Acute Bee Paralysis Virus, IAPV, Kashmir Bee Virus, KBV, and Black Queen Cell Virus, BQSV, in the family of Ifliviruses, Slow Paralytic Virus, SPV, Deformed Wing Virus, DWV, and Sac Brood Bee Virus, SBV. In the Nodovirus family, Chronic Bee Paralysis Virus, CBPV. Other viruses, such as aphid lethal paralysis virus, Big Sioux River virus, Varroa destructor virus, Lake Sinai virus strain 1 and 2, are not so dangerous viruses but they can provoke a deterioration in the adaptation of bees to the cold, a reduction in egg laying by the queen, flight activity and a decrease in nectar collection. <laughs> When bees contract the chronic paralysis virus, the infected bees fly out of the hive, to die outside the colony. This behavior is generally the norm for bees. Sick and old bees die as far as possible from their nest. The first wave falls ill and flies away on its last final flight. The first wave is followed by the second, third, fourth. And so the beekeeper opens this hive and freezes. The hive is neat, there is a lot of honey and bee bread, but not a single living soul. 
It resembles a philosophical picture of Darwin and it seems to an eyewitness that the veil is about to fall from the eyes and tens of thousands of inhabitants of a beautiful house will appear. The course of the disease with acute viral paralysis looks different. At the very beginning, the family affected by the virus becomes more aggressive. When the hive is opened, individual bees pounce on a person for no reason and, clutching at the clothes, begin to sting it obsessively with frenzy. The bee does not fly away from this place on its own and it can only be torn off from clothes by grabbing the body. This behavior is dictated by the fact that the virus in the bee's body affects mainly two areas, the digestive tract and nerve cells, including the cells of the bee brain. Sick bees, at first, seem to fly off the coils, but after a while a terrible ending comes, those bees who have not yet affected nerve cells, a sense of self-preservation turns on. At dawn, they drive out the sisters and brothers who have taken hold of the disease during the night from the hive outside the hive or drive them under the roof, and they, in convulsions, die near the hive and in the under-roof space. They sick, are chosen independently and even fly away from the hive. But the next morning, everything is exactly the same. The whole process of the death of a family lasts approximately three days. After these three days of the acute phase of the disease, the hive no longer smells of Darwin at all. On the frames, clutching the combs, a crowd of hundreds of the last dead bees sit, which there was no one to drive out of the hive. The corpses of bees are also lying at the bottom of the hive. But the bees themselves actually acquire a specific smell. The smell appears due to the digestive tract affected by viruses. What does it look like? I even find it difficult to compare it with something. I would define it as the smell of acute viral paralysis. It does not resemble any odors associated with the normal life of bees. In 2018 and 2019, the acute paralysis virus mowed down a huge number of bee colonies, in almost all regions of the Russian Federation. Beekeepers, according to the old Russian tradition, blamed their neighbors' farmers for their troubles, as if farmers poison bees as a result of agrochemical procedures. Moreover, the media stubbornly beat them with sledgehammers at one point, the bees were poisoned with pesticides. But this is the clearest example of a gross error of beekeepers and deliberate sweeping of a serious health problem of bees under a fluffy carpet. We assume that individual families may have suffered from spraying of rapeseed and other melliferous crops during flowering. But the lion's share of bee colonies died from acute viral paralysis. This can be clearly seen even from those videos that beekeepers post on the internet. If bees collect poisoned nectar, then they line the road of death with their bodies, some die earlier, others later. On this road, you can safely walk to the place of injury. At the same time, the dead bees themselves do not have a smell. In case of death of bees from acute viral paralysis, the beekeeper finds a significant number of dead bee bodies along the arrival board of the hive. Bees look unnatural, often black, with a smooth, lint-free body and a bad smell. We have already mentioned the fact that viral epidemics leading to the mass death of bees occur in years of low solar activity. But here's what's interesting. 
because the Sun with regularly changing activity has been behaving this way at least since 1700, from the very moment from which it is regularly monitored. Moreover, it should be assumed that this solar behavior is an important bioregulatory process on the Earth. Not only insects obey him, but also higher animals. It turns out that if there were no regulator of the biomass number, then a biological race would take place on Earth without hope for balance. One of the inhabitants of the planet would have pulled ahead and displace everyone else indiscriminately. But this does not happen, because in nature the sword of Damocles is always suspended. In this whole scheme, a plan is seen and a natural question arises. Who or what makes the sun periodically open the gates in order to thin out the breeding brethren beyond measure? Physicists are not yet able to give a clear answer to this question. But philosophers say that the sun is the same living organism as everything in the universe. The Sun has its own rhythm of life and these rhythmic beats are felt by all the inhabitants of the solar system. In the wake of our investigation, a preliminary conclusion can be drawn, which is as follows. The Sun, opening and closing its radiant gates, conscientiously performs the role of a regulator of the Earth's biomass. But it turns out that on the Earth itself, some settings have been violated and now it is time to talk not about regulation, but about the complete disappearance of many species from the animal kingdom. And this is what the experiment carried out in the first Ing command, starting in 2017, showed. By the beginning of the experiment, the summer of 2017 in the northwest turned out to be abnormally cold. Wild herb plants not that they did not bloom, they simply did not even germinate. The insidious year did not allow the hastily constructed commanding dam to be populated with bees, but the test site itself was successfully completed. 2018 turned out to be doubly amazing. Not because in the spring of this year the commander ship met its first settler bees, but actually surprised by other wild insects. It would seem that the previous 2017 year was not favorable for the development of insects in the current year. But no, the year was marked by an amazing number of forest bumblebees. There were as many bumblebees on flowering plants as bees usually are in a field of flowering buckwheat. And yet, in the new hives, small black ants have abundantly taken root. Since the spring of 18, the bees have shown good development, normal growth and decent results in bringing nectar, pollen and detaching combs. That is the year has passed under the sign of normal flight. Year 2019. With the onset of stable heat, bumblebees appeared, but there were not so many of them as last year. By the end of spring and early summer, the bumblebees suddenly disappeared all at once. Moreover, completely, following the bumblebees, the high freeloaders ants abruptly disappeared. It was as if a cow was licking them with her tongue. It became clear that a pestilence broke out among ants and bumblebees. However, the bees behaved normally. Moreover, after a cool July and 20 days of the same August as a gift of God, a 10-day honeymoon madness began. During these ten days, which shook not only the world, but us, who have already seen the species, each bee family has stored two buckets of honey. The bees not only brought nectar, but managed to turn it into ripe honey and seal the frames from top to bottom. 
bees collected honey not only from fireweed and sweet clover, but also from heather. Some of the honey was of honeydew origin. It is strictly forbidden for bees to winter on honeydew and heather honey. So it was decided to pump out honey that is forbidden to bees and give it full food instead. In such an environment, the final act of 2019 came to the inhabitants of the commandery. During feeding in the first ten days of September, the strongest families of the apiary began to sprinkle. Three days, and only a heap of dead bees remains from the living family at the hive entrance. Three more days, and no next family. The other, less powerful bee colonies began to sprinkle according to the same pattern. As a result, two weakened families remained on the experimental site for the winter. We can safely assume that bees, and bumblebees, and ants, for some time now, in addition to the traditional microorganisms contained in their cells, additionally acquired new microbes. This is a group of viruses that cause paralysis of insects. Viruses are able to stay in their host cell for a long time in a latent state, waiting in the wings. They barely show themselves, are not actively reproduced, only passed down from generation to generation. The evil genius of the acute paralysis virus is most likely the aphid. Or even, it should be more correct to say so, the aphid became the trigger that started the replication of the virus. It is, of course, necessary to find out all possible channels for the circulation of the virus and its launch of the active phase but according to the situation that developed in the 2019 season. One can state a fact both bumblebees, and ants, and bees, all collected sweet honeydew secreted by aphids and yet they consistently burned out in the epidemic fire that raged in the northwest region of, as it turns out, not only in this region. The fact that aphids are involved in the chain of triggering an epidemic of viral paralysis indicates another circumstance that is associated with the life cycle of the aphid itself. As a rule, bees die from viral paralysis in spring and late autumn. Winter mortality is a continuation of the autumn one. It is known that bees collect honeydew honey only when it is difficult to take bribes from flowers. And this happens just in the spring and autumn periods. But most importantly, in the spring, a special aphid appears from fertilized eggs, and in the fall and only in autumn, males and full-fledged females. All these types of aphids can be said to feed very intensively, much more intense than the aphid that appears as a result of parthenogenesis, which means that the chemical composition of the sweet substances that the summer aphid secretes will differ from the secretions in spring and autumn. And yet, obviously, one should not discount the yeast bodies on the leaves of plants, which also feed on the secretions of aphids. Yeast is known to be able to release toxins to combat its competitors. It seems to me that in this place is the needle that stings our bees in the very heart. The situation, you see, is rather unpleasant. If it is confirmed that different types of insects are affected by the same virus, then fighting for the welfare of only one bee becomes a useless strategy. 
Another conclusion suggests itself, viruses of chronic and acute paralysis in modern times, most likely, had an insect host but, for sure, they were not bees. At the end of the last century, a transformation of the virus took place, and the virus spread to social insects. Everything happened according to the same scheme, and, remarkably, practically at the same time. When the viruses of the so-called avian influenza of the H5N1 strain mastered the human body, and then the viruses of the so-called swine flu of the H1N1 strain followed the example of the avian. And of course, it is impossible not to mention the COVID-19 virus. Periodic cycles of low and high solar activity lead to regulation of the number of insect growth, and this is an observed fact. But, in recent decades, we see that for some reason the knobs of the regulators have been twisted to the maximum and, now, it's time to talk not about restoring the balance of wildlife. but about the impending complete disappearance of a number of insect species, including bees. So who will say, where is the scammer who, willingly or unwillingly, plays with the balance control knobs with his limbs and threatens the well-being of our planet? Let us turn for first aid to the queen of sciences, mathematics and, directly, to the brilliant mathematical prince Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier and his ranks. According to Fourier, any complex periodic signal is the sum of a certain number of simple harmonic signals that can be obtained by decomposing a complex signal into its components. It is like a musical chord that can be expressed as the sum of the musical sounds that make it up. We have already found out that the sun literally falls asleep with an enviable regularity and frequency of 11.7 years. And during the period preceding the solar hibernation in different parts of the earth a pestilence arises among insects. Solar sleep lasts for a relatively short period of time and, upon waking up, the sun drives away from the insect kingdom to attack and the butterfly bees enter a new cycle of prosperity and growth. We can say that until recently, the natural decline of insects, in general terms, repeated the first and main harmonic, the harmonic of the solar activity. Higher second, third, fourth, etc. The harmonics were so insignificant that, in fact, they did not affect the shape of the fundamental signal. This has always been the case, until for some time now. Something has not changed and some of the subsequent higher harmonics began to grow in amplitude, as by leaps and bounds, and make a significant correction in the natural course of events. And, look how interesting, each of the new higher harmonics leads to a shift in the fundamental function. Moreover, the event itself, associated with low solar activity, is shifted to the early region. That is, it occurs the day before, remains in the middle or, shifts to the late region, and the load itself significantly increases in amplitude. Let's try in the natural environment itself to determine some higher harmonics that distort the shape of the main signal. Forest fires are significant seasonal ecological disasters in our country. Forest fires occur with enviable regularity, almost every summer. Floods and washout of fertile soil can be attributed to such violations of the biobalance. In recent years, mines and mining companies that use dubious chemical technologies in their activities have increasingly come to the attention of ecologists. 
As a result, electrolytes and various chemical compounds enter water and soil. Moreover, poisoning of the environment occurs for several years in a row until the mine or mine is exhausted. But that's not all. From one observed cycle to another, we see that the amplitude of the load on insects increases with each new cycle. This means that our periodic function interacts with other functions that have a much longer period compared to the function of the solar activity period and look like monotonically decreasing curves. On this occasion, it is necessary to open another detective investigation. But it seems that some of our whales are already lying on the surface and some are buried underground. Since then, when they began to extract hydrocarbons, they began to steal fresh surface water from our land. It is known that for the complete extraction of valuable raw materials from a deposit, fresh water is pumped into it. The worked-out coal mines will face the same fate. Sooner or later they will be filled with water in full. Thus, the amount of produced hydrocarbons, ultimately, turns into carbon dioxide and its amount in the atmosphere grows, and a medium-sized river flows into the bowels of the earth to the vacant place of hydrocarbons. Global forest burnout in Russia is a regular series of catastrophes that happen quite often and the period of each such misfortune is much less than one year. In our picture, in the functional range, this is one of the higher harmonics. But if the forest fire was a top one, the restoration of biobalance on this piece of land is not such a quick story. The forces of nature will take 50 to 100 years. Both top fires and the irreversible burial of surface fresh water in the bowels of the earth are monotonically decreasing functions, which over and over again increase the force of impact on wildlife. We are faced with the rhetorical question, what to do? In truth, there is no clear answer, of course. It is necessary to restore the damaged balance in nature everywhere. One can hope that the virus will integrate into the genome of insects and the bees will acquire resistance to infection, but... Unfortunately, this will take an insane number of years. But, listen, bees, other insects may no longer cope with the subsequent epidemiological blow, which will follow no further than a decade later. Our favorite bees are in time trouble. And we too. The Kingdom of Insects Needs Louis Pasteur Dear Louis, please respond. The suffering poor fellows need your participation. If you do not find a vaccine against terrible viruses for our beloved bees, ants, insects, everyone, everyone will have a cup. The current 24th cycle of low solar activity is unique in duration. It continues throughout 2018, 2019 and is predicted to continue in 2020. Insects were not loaded with such a long period of low solar activity, perhaps for at least 200 years. In the spring and summer of 2020, Russia continues to record a massive loss of bee colonies.